The Challenge of the Yukon. On King, on you millennium! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Knotted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. The bank in Lawrenceville was nearly empty when the tall, broad-shouldered man entered it, closing the door behind him. Well, Charlie, let's see. That makes uh, how much you got in here. 50000 in gold is mine in that safe of yours, young fella. All right. Here's your balance. Don't bother putting that gold away. Huh? Oh, what I, I don't bother putting that away. I'm taking it with me when I leave, and more besides. A, a gun? That's right, old timer. This is a stick-up. You I'll can't leave. get away with this. I'll show you. No, you don't. Oh. Oh. There, you see what happened to him. I get busy turning the combination on that safe, or you'll hit the floor next. Yes, sir. Come on, quit stalling. I ain't got all day. I'm turning it as fast as I can. Hey, what the... Drop that gun, mister. I'll put your hands up. Constable Riley, you came in just in time. Yeah. I heard the shot as I was coming down Main Street. He shot Charlie McDonald. He meant to kill him. It ain't his fault. Charlie ain't dead. Well, he ain't going to do any more killing. Put those bracelets on him, Ted. He'll hang for attempted murder. Two days later, Sergeant Preston halted his dogs before the jail in Lawrenceville. And with the faithful king at his heels, walked into Constable Tom Riley's sparsely furnished office. <laughs> well, Sergeant Preston, doggone it, if you ain't a sight for sore eyes. How are you, anyway? Fine, Tim, and you? <laughs> oh, well, I can't complain. Sit down. I heard a couple of days ago that you were heading this way. Couldn't figure out for at first. And then, uh... I nabbed this Jackson fellow for the robbery. I kind of thought maybe you knew it was coming off, and I... I was talking to Ted Hammond as I came into town. He told me about your prisoner. Yeah. Ted will remember Jackson for a long time, I guess. <laughs> He's kind of a quiet sort, and having a gun pointed at him ain't exactly his idea of a good time. I suppose not. Jackson's going to hang, eh? He sure is. He made a big mistake when he turned his back to the door in the bank. I took him by surprise. Now, most of them killers are too smart to take a chance like that. Yes, most of them are. Well, I'd like to talk to him, if you don't mind. To Jackson? That's right. Well, I ain't got anything against the idea, but what in tarnation you got to talk about with him? We caught him red-handed. Nevertheless, I... I'd like to talk to him. Ah, uh, that's all right with me. I'm inclined to think that you've got something up your sleeve, Sergeant. Maybe that's just your suspicious nature, Sam. Well, here's Jackson. Uh, Sergeant Preston wants to talk to you, Jackson. Well, I don't want to talk to him. You ain't got much choice in the matter. All right, Sergeant. King going in with you? <laughs> yes. Come on, boy. I'll call when I'm through, Sam. Yeah, sure, Sergeant. I'll be right in the office. <laughs> you, you were pretty careless, weren't you, Jackson? Uh, might be I'm unlucky. Do you think luck has anything to do with well, it? Sure. But I had good luck, it wouldn't be slated to hang in 24 hours. There was a bank robbery in Curtis City seven years ago. The thief murdered a man making his getaway. Was that luck? Mm, if he got away, he was lucky. He got away, all right. At the same time that a man named Dan Connolly disappeared. Well, what happened seven years ago don't mean a thing to me, Monty. A lot of people in Curtis City believe Connolly robbed the bank. Ever been to Curtis City, Jackson? Why? You might know Connolly. His wife and son still live there, and his son's a fine young man now. Yeah. Yeah. He and his mother have had a bad time of it. But even so, he won't sell any of his father's possessions. He still has his father's watch and gun. What do you mean? Bad time of it. The mine they'd invested in gave out. Gave out? Well, a man ought to look out for his family. This means nothing to me, Marty. So... You're about as tall as Connolly. 
maybe not so heavy. And, of course, you've got a oh, beard, see but... Oh, here. Why are you talking about Connolly? Curious thing about that robbery. The stolen gold was part of a new issue, and the rest of the issue has never been released. Oh, whatever. I ain't interested. The thief spent one of those gold pieces a few months ago. I have that gold piece. Oh, hold on to it. It might bring you luck. Jackson, the bank in Curtis City is mighty anxious to recover that gold. There's a big reward for its return. Get to the point, Monty. I got one of Connolly's old hats and King here caught the scent of it. He recognized that scent when we walked into this building. You win, Preston. I thought my trail was cold. But when you took over, I knew it was just a matter of time. You purposely bungled a robbery here and shot him. Well, I hoped the constable would shoot me. But instead he captured me. And I will hang. But it's better for Joe Jackson to hang. That won't disgrace my kid. Like it would if I was taken back to Curtis City to hang as Dan Connolly. You... You've seen my son? Yes, I have. Yes. You say he's having a tough time. He's a little young to shoulder so much responsibility. Oh. There's a reward standing for the return of the gold, huh? That's right. Yeah. Well, up to now, you've been calling the card, and you've been right at every turn. You know who I am, but you don't know where the gold is. No, I don't know where it is. I do know. And I'll make a deal with you. No, 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 it ain't what you think. I'm not trying to buy you off. You know better than that, Connolly. Sure. You can take me back to Curtis City if you want to and pin that job on me. But that ain't going to put the gold back in the bank. Not unless we find it. Uh, you won't. Sergeant, I'm going to hang anyhow. Where I hang don't make much difference as I see it. But a man that's slated to die usually gets one request. Yes, that's good. I want 24 hours of freedom. Mm. I guarantee you I won't try to make a getaway. This dog of yours is smart enough to trail me clear to Dawson. But I got a reason for asking that. Just 24 hours is all I want. I don't know. You give me 24 hours and I promise you that you'll get the gold. You'll get the gold and I'll swing for taking it. I know you ain't got any reason for handing me a favor. You want to leave, Tom? Yeah. I want to go back to Curtis City. And I want to go back on my own. What's the answer, Molly? Late that night, after Sergeant Preston had talked to him, Constable Tom Riley stood in his office with his keys in his hand. Then, putting them back in his pocket, he walked to Joe Jackson's cell. Well, I just want to make sure everything's all right back here, Jackson. Yeah, everything's all right, Constable. Yeah, yeah, so I see. What was that? What was what? Well, I thought I heard something out in the office. Well, you see anyone out there? No, no, I don't. Well, I guess I'll take a turn outside. Good night, Jackson. Good night, Constable. Well, I'll put on my mac and on. Thanks. It'll be good to get some fresh air. Well, you look like you're ready to hit the trail, Sergeant. Dogs all in harness and everything. Oh, I just have a hunch I might have to follow a man. Hmm. Well, it's nice and clear out. Got a moon, too. Wouldn't be hard to keep a set of tracks in sight on a night like this. What? Someone's leaving the back of the jail. Yeah. Uh, wait until... Well, my keys are gone. When I turn my back on Jackson, he must... Come on, let's go and take a look. Why, the door of his cell is wide open, Sergeant. There he goes, Tim. My sled's ready to travel. Come on. Get the dogs up, King. I'm aboard, Tim. All set? Yeah, sure, Sergeant. All right, fella. I'm on King! I'm on you, Melanie! Early the next morning, young Peter Conley was busy sweeping the floor of the bank in Curtis City. At the far end of the room, the guard lounged comfortably in his chair. We're not open yet. 
Better open the door and tell him, Pete. He don't seem to hear you. Yeah, sure, Mr. Marlin. I'm sorry, mister, but we're not open yet. If you'll stop by in 15 or 20 minutes... Oh. Then... How come you're in there, then? You, uh, you work here? I come in early every morning to sweep the place out. Well, look, kid, I'd like to talk to you. you, you, you step outside a minute? Well, all right. You want to have a coat on. No, if you'll just be a minute. What is it you want? You're pretty young to be working, ain't you? I'm nearly 14. Well, uh, you, uh... Don't you have any folks? Sure, my mother. What about your father? He's been gone for quite a while, so there's just Mom and me. What happened to him? I don't know. Mom never said she knew exactly. But he went off on a hunting trip one day and never came back. Well, that's tough, kid. Oh, it's not so bad. A lot of people in town think he robbed this bank, but Mom and me, we know he didn't. He just had an accident while he was home. Oh, sure, sure, Ken. Someday everybody will know like we do that he didn't steal that money. Well, you can forget it, kid, because I robbed that bank. You what? I pulled the job. That's why I want to talk to you. I got the gold. It's holed up in the floor of a cabin about 15 miles north of town. The only cabin this side of Blackstone Creek. Oh, God! But I'm stuck with it. It was part of a new issue. They didn't release the rest of it after the robbery. And that means the minute I part with one of them coins, the law will be on my neck. Then you're the thief. Yeah. Now, I want you to fix it so as I can swap what I took for dust of the same value. I'll make it worth your while, kid. And I take it you can use some cash. Why, uh, just a minute. Hey, where are you going? Uh, I have to go inside. Mr. Marlin, Mr. Marlin. Well, uh, what's eating you, Pete? You're all excited. Look, I don't have time to tell you, but come on outside. And you better have your gun ready. What? Quick, before he gets away. Before who gets away? The man who robbed this bank seven years ago. He told me where the gold's hidden. Oh, kid, what do you... Hey... What this boy told me is true, you better reach, mister. Oh, so you went back in for him, huh? No, you're not going to fire that gun and you know it. Hey, Mr. Marlin, he's getting away. I'm sorry if I was more sure you got this straight. There he is. After him, Jay. Get away from me, you must. Get away. Help me. No. Good work, King. Call the dog off, Monty. No, sir. There's a man, Tim. Hey, this time you won't get away, Jackson. Gee, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Peter. This man made a break from the jail in Lawrenceville. When we saw him, he was running away from you and the guards. That's right, sir. He told me he robbed this bank seven years ago. And that he had some gold hidden in the floor of a cabin just this side of Blackstone Creek. He robbed the bank here? Well, we'll go out to that cabin and find out. Well, that, that means that Jackson has one more robbery and murder on his record. Well, he's going to hang this afternoon. Now, son, I don't know whether you know it or not, but there's a big reward for the return of that stolen gold. That's right. Come on, Jackson. The two of us are going to the jail, and it'll be a one-way trip for you. Fine. I'll go inside the bank for the boy. Gee, I forgot all about that reward. Wait till Mr. Snyder hears about this. He's the president of the bank. I sure am glad you finally caught the crust. <laughs> yes, he's a fine boy. I knew you were there, Sergeant. I saw you watching me. Tell me, did it look real? I'm sure he'll never suspect the truth. Well, uh, hang as Joe Jackson. That's right. And the boy will get the reward. Yes. Thanks. Justice has been more than fair to me. <laughs> yes, fella. Thanks to your help, the case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios.